Hello, everybody. Welcome to our, ooh, what month is this? March. <laughs> March 2021 March. Tower Garden Show oh. and Tell. And what you can probably see on the screen is um, Chris's Tower Gardens. If you don't see my face, I'll let her talk and you can see her Tower Gardens. All right. So I have three Tower Gardens. I have two home base models and then I have one, I mean, two flex models, one home model. Um, and I actually just uh, harvested a lot of this over the weekend and replanted um, just because it was like so overgrown. I'm, I'm leaving my tomatoes in though because they're still growing. They, all of a sudden this thing is like attacking these other plants over here but there's flowers on it so I'm just letting it grow <laughs> um, so I have I have yellow pear down here oh there's yummy of, yeah if you look underneath there they all are <laughs> oh wow so you have two yeah. different tomato plants in there I do I have um just a regular I don't even know if this is like a it's not a romaine it's just a smaller a smaller tomato red tomato um, it's not a beef steak. And yeah, so then I have different types of lettuce. I got lots of Swiss chard because I love that for my smoothies. I usually put a marigold on each one just to- Wow, that's a happy marigold. Pass. That one is, I had to get new ones for over here. That's a new baby that I just planted. This, I think that down there is echinacea. I'm trying echinacea. Oh. I'm like, I saw it there and I'm like, hey, can I grow echinacea and put it in my smoothie and then it will give me, boost my immune system. And that's my cilantro is going crazy. <laughs> we had high, high winds yesterday. Holy cow. And it was, I, these things got, these got blown over a little bit. What, those, those are, are my, onions? Those are green onions. Yes. Whoa, <laughs> that's impressive. I know those green cool. onions are growing. Yeah. And I've got basil. Oh, uh, what else? I think I just planted some sorrel. I got lots of spinach. What's the giant lettuces on the bottom? Those are mirror, mirror lettuce. So it's like a green leaf, but it's just called mirror. Wow. And then I planted, that's a, I think this is a sugar snap pea or a snow, snow pea. I think I got a bean. Um, and then over here, some some snap peas, parsley, kale, um, more kale, celery. You should have seen the celery that I got off my tower from that I harvested. It was huge, huge, huge. I had two huge ones. Wow. So yeah, lots of stuff. So more tomatoes. Let's see, more just so lots of greens, you know, lettuces and greens and some herbs and stuff like that. So beautiful. Yeah. So not everybody knows where you Doesn't are, Chris. Mind. Where are you? I'm in Gilbert, Arizona. Okay, Gilbert. There you go. Gilbert. Three yep. tower gardens. One was inside, Three but then got moved outside because all the outside ones were so happy. <laughs> I know. Well, yeah, my indoor one, it didn't. It, I just got a whole bunch of aphids on that thing. So I said, you're going outside so I can spray you off. Perfect. So, yeah. And that happens. Yeah, these these sometimes you brought the aphids in. I think they're the aphid monsters. <laughs> <sighs> it's hard to make dogs like clean themselves off before they come inside. So I totally oh, I get know. that. I know. Well, yeah, this is actually one that I transplanted my pepper plant into here. And look at all my peppers that are growing. They just, wow. they just kept growing. So I just, I took it out of my garden and planted it in there. Okay, so, so that is a conversation that I just recently had with somebody else. Transplanting. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. transplant them from the tower garden. What did you do to I transplanted them. make sure that they like didn't go into shock? Because I've transplanted stuff and then I killed everything. Well, this one doesn't look super duper happy. You can see it's not like a real dark green. It's more of a light green. Yeah. And it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, this one is not the happiest. And I think, I don't know if it's because, I don't know if the pot is not maybe big enough. Um, I'm not sure. Did what, you have to give you know, it a whole it, bunch it of water? 
No, I mean, I just put it in there and then I, you know, I just kept, I, I water it every day, you know, not every day, but you know, whenever it's dry, I water it. So, and then here, I'm going to show you a comparison. Oh my gosh, dog doo-doo. So this is my in-ground garden. And I planted this in-ground garden in November. Not much is growing yet. It's taken no. that long. How many months? November, December, January, February, March. So four months. I am getting like sugar snap. These are the sugar snap peas. And these yeah. are some carrots. Carrots are starting to come right there. Nice. So I've got a whole row of carrots that are supposed to be going right here. All these carrots, but there's only a few that are popping up. A few here. Um, but it ta it's taking forever. I think that's broccoli way in the middle. So just Oops. a comparison between tower garden and in-ground garden. Tower garden grows super duper fast compared to in-ground garden. Right. That's been my experience yeah. too. That's been it my does. experience it's crazy. too. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Yep. No, I was like, yeah, we see the ground. Faster. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Well, as I I'm, thank you for sharing. Those look gorgeous. I kind of want to jump over there to Micah yes, just welcome. because I see that it's getting dark there in Texas. <laughs> yep. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, we're losing light fast. She needs to talk about her so we can see what she's got. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't, she has no lighting out here. Um, it happens. But all of mine got planted just four weeks ago and I put them in and like I said, we lost power with a snowstorm in Texas for four days. It froze. There was ice in the base of the tower garden, but I didn't lose the plants. They, as soon as we got power back, it started recirculating and I've got lots of lettuces. I don't know if you can see it. Oh yeah. Take us up close. I'm trying. That's amazing that you didn't lose any plants. All right. So there's some arugula. Lots of different lettuces coming in. Um, they got burnt pretty bad, but they're still trying to come back really well. So, and that's some dill and cilantro up top. And on the back side, it's got a couple of more of the same stuff, but I was just impressed that it didn't completely die. Beautiful. Yeah, and definitely. so what did you do? Cause I know you got snow. It didn't stay in that spot. Oh, my husband built me a base and <laughs> I rolled it in the garage and we hid from the winter inside. <laughs> but even inside the house it got down to like 45 degrees because no heat or electricity of any kind it was crazy but it wow. did really well impressively well awesome well that's exciting that's a testament that plants are amazing and they can yeah. handle even being frozen for a little while you know the funny thing as long as they came right back yeah, well, the herbs seem to do better when it all happened like that. The cilantro shot up, the bill was going crazy, and it was cold. Ice out there, it was crazy, but they loved it. Huh, now that's, you learn something new every day, for sure. Yeah. So the other thing we wanted to talk about is nutrients, because you're going to add nutrients. And I was like, wait, let's do it on the call. <laughs> okay, so um, for nutrients, you have Tower Garden A and Tower Garden B, or nutrient A and B. And for that many plants, for little baby plants, for a full reservoir of, of water, I yeah. say ha add a half, especially winter. You don't go through a whole lot, but right. babies, you don't want to burn them. So I, 400 milliliters is the full dosage. So 200 milliliters. So one of the little cups that they send you is a good amount of each like one cup of each is what I've understood to be a good amount. Does anyone have any recommendations or ads or changes to that? As we get warmer, how often would you do it? So as it gets warmer, depending on how warm, granted you're in Texas and it's windy, when you oh, yeah. experience wind, so your plants drink more water. But as it gets warmer, I usually do full strength. So like as the plants get a little bit bigger, I do the full strength of 400 milliliters. But as it starts to get warm, so I say like super windy or temperatures above 90 or 100, 
if you're adding like water every couple days, I recommend adding adding nutrition, add, adding the nutrients every other time you fill the tower garden or doing half the strength if you're going to do it every time. So saying maybe like 100, if you're not going to fill it completely up, just do like the half of the little cup and do 100 milliliters. And then, I mean, just kind of play with it a little bit. Um, Chris, what do you, what have you, I know you've done a lot of stuff with Tim Blank, who's the the master, right. but. There's, there's actually a really good Zoom call, Micah, that is on the Tower to Table Facebook page. Oh, yes. And it's called um, Tower Gardening in Extreme Heat. And we followed what Tim Blank said to do in extreme heat this last summer. And I probably had the best growing summer ever. Okay. And his biggest tips were top off your water every single day. So don't let your water level go down because the further down it goes, the, the less water that's in the reservoir, the easier or the it'll heat up faster. Obviously less water is going to heat up faster. So the more water you keep in there, the less it, the, the cooler, the water will stay. Then, yeah. Then he said to spray them down every night. Um, you know, before, you know, at nighttime after the sun goes down, spray them down and, and, um, you know, with just a, a good shower with the hose or whatever and keep yeah. everything clean and keep everything, you know, off like bugs away and different things like that. And then the other thing was like Nikki said, do I did, I probably did half strength of nutrients once a week. So every, yeah. you know, every Saturday or every Sunday I would do half strength nutrients, but then every single day I would top off the water. Oh, perfect. There you go. Yeah. yeah. So, it, and it really, it did. It was like it, probably one of the best summers that I've, that I've been able to grow down here. The plants. That makes a lot of sense to keep mm -hmm. the water cooler. And I'm guilty yeah. of letting it run way down in the summer. And you can oh, tell. Yeah. Too. yeah. All it takes is like a day sometimes. And it's, you know, that water level drops. Cause there were times we were literally putting probably five gallons in each one of them every day. Just wow. because, you know, just, just to keep it topped off, but it really, really helped. So that makes sense. Perfect. The top off. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, a big, but yeah, if you're going to top it off every day, you don't want to add nutrients every day. Cause you're going to add way too much, yeah. which is going to kill the plants. Yeah. So yeah. Half strength in the summer once a week. That's a perfect, yeah. yeah. That's a perfect way to do it for the heat. But the in the heat, winter, yes, I the do heat. full strength, like currently just for my plants, like right now, I've got a full tower of full plants. So I mm -hmm. did the full strength of the 400, the 400 milliliters of the nutrient solution, but it's mm -hmm. inside. So inside's a little bit different too, because inside opposed to outside, right? Outside, you're going to have more weather. The plants are going to drink a lot more water, that kind of thing. Indoors, you don't fill the tank near as much because you have no, like the plants don't perspire that there's no wind really to cut, to, to dry out the plants that makes them drink more water, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it seems to be different. So every time I fill it up, but it's inside, I don't really have to worry about temperature fluctuations because it's pretty consistent in here. Mm -hmm. um, I just let it go down and hopefully fill it before it starts sucking air. <laughs> Usually well, I can I it, the audible sound of the tower garden is quite a bit louder when it's emptier. And I was like, all right, time to fill it. Can't hear the movie. <laughs> yeah. And doesn't isn't the the timer for indoor only like once every hour? It like goes once every 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah. So like I indoor? have I have the old timer, but I just recently bought the new timer because I thought this one was going out, but it seems to be fine now. But <laughs> Um, I had a little short scare came down, came and looked at all the plants. They were all like, I'm like, that looks oh, no. like, that looks like it used to when my, when I would uh, not put water in it. I was like, that's interesting. I'm not sure what to do, <laughs> but it hasn't done it since. So I don't know. I, I got fiddled with or something. The cat messed with it or something. 
but everything's mm-hmm. been fine. But the new timer is slightly different, but yeah, it's not very much. There's outside or inside on the new timer, but the right. old timer, we set it to 15 minutes on 45 minutes off. Yeah. Inside when outside it was 15 on 15 off. Right. See, and, and when you have the new timer for outdoor, it's yeah, it's three, like three minutes on, three and, on, three on, twelve off, three yeah. on, twelve off. So yeah, it's it's completely different. Is that, than that's outside. On, that's the outside. Yeah. Okay. Three on, twelve off. Yeah. So I was just like, is this gonna work? Because I was so used to that. Fifteen on, fifteen off, fifteen on, fifteen off. Well, and that's the one thing I love about the Tower Garden Company is they're always innovating and making it better. So they're like, hey, instead of having to do these little tick marks that you need fingernails or girl fingers or something like not everyone can do it to like here let's just make it a button so o for outside i for inside like that's it you don't have to set it you don't have to think about it it's already yeah. pre-programmed which is amazing yes. that's kind of one of the reasons i bought the new one just so it's like it's kind of an upgrade <laughs> definitely changes a little bit it changes a mm-hmm. little bit well well judy did you want to show off your tower garden well, sure. Am I, am I on? You are on. You're you are. on. How am so I going to flip you it? Just, you have a second tower garden, actually. You just got a second one. Well, oh, if, so I wanted it's a new baby. We, if I wanted vegetables, we had to get another one because the first one is some really happy medicine. And this is my storeroom, tower garden room in the winter. So get over it. Um, <laughs> how do I flip it? Tap on the screen and then there'll be a, a camera with like a little circle inside of it. Um, Maybe towards the bottom, it should be next to the end button. Okay. Sorry. Bottom left mine, usually. Mine is mine is on the top, depending, I suppose, on what you what kind of phone you have. Mine's on the oh, there top. There it is. Left. There it is. Found okay, it. Okay. I'm show She's, got you an the medicine. <laughs> She's got an Android. <laughs> Give me a sec. I'm gonna show you the medicine. Look oh, at perfect. That. Oh, that's I awesome. See it. Oh, yep. Isn't that pretty? That's awesome. That's so pretty. That's gorgeous. Did someone say what are those? So that's medicine, and this is indoor, 9,000 feet in the middle of winter. Um, these have been growing for three months. Um, Daryl's realized that if you put them at the top of the garden, they do better. Okay. Um, so there's that. So then on the new one, we got the microgreen. I'm gonna show you that. Sorry about the mess. Oh, yay! Baby. Oh, cool. Yeah. So he gets there's microgreens, and then he gets more medicine space, and then I'm finally gonna get like lettuce and spinach and stuff. Cause yay. Um, yeah. So that's tomatoes. That's what my parents they did. They grew medicine on top and the tomatoes on the bottom in one of their tower gardens. I was like, yeah. hey, well, it works. You they grow good together. Now. So how many, how many of the marijuana plants do you have on that one tower garden? Well, a lot. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure if there was just a few or if there was a bunch of them. Well, okay. So see how they don't do well at the bottom. Okay. And how pretty they are at the top. Um, yeah. So huh. I don't know. I wonder okay. if that's because the rooting system where it'll get more water because it, you know, how it comes, it'll grow all the way down in your base. Yeah. It makes sense instead of getting spiraled up in the pump. So Daryl put, oh, sorry. Daryl put um, burlap inside the tower because his thought is that um, the roots at the bottom were getting too wet. Okay. So mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I think that's working. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. news to me. I didn't know that. Yeah. He just needed to do something. 
Yeah. So, and I'll let you know on the next call how good the medicine is. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> That'll work. We how, appreciate Judy, it. Judy, how long does it take to grow from seed to when you can harvest? These are, these have been in here for three months and um, they're starting to flower a little bit. So probably four months in, yeah. in the winter. Okay. Yeah, outside in the greenhouse in the summer, it's it's an amazing sight to behold. Those those um, stems are as big as my wrist, and yeah. it looks like they could like break the garden. But now nah, they know. don't. They from the what, from the experience that I had at my dad's house that they they grew large. But like most trees, you see, like if you think of like a tree through a barbed wire fence, what it does is it kind of grows around it. So instead of like breaking the tower garden, what it did is it just kind of separated the tower garden yeah. in split yeah. pieces, or it just had like a ridge where the top of the tower garden was from my, from what I thought. I was like, oh, cause I thought it would just bust it open, but yeah, no, they're, they're quite nice plants. They're gentle. <laughs> <laughs> they're mm -hmm. gentle trees okay we good yeah thank you so much you're welcome and Thanks your for... your food tower garden i look forward to seeing more stuff in that one too so do i <laughs> yeah <laughs> beautiful thank you for sharing those are great you're those welcome are super super good so then um, I know that um, Peggy has a tower garden, but it's taken down currently. And she was in, you were in Washington, D.C., and now you're in Idaho. Yeah, that's right. We, we ended our military career, and now we're settling in a new life in Idaho. Beautiful. So, so the tower, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just getting some food. Yes. Child, I'm downstairs. Um, there you go. Here. So we um we bought a house that has oh here I'll show everybody that had an empty lot next to it and so we were able to buy the lot. Oh my gosh! So my, my dream. Okay, let's see if I can do the switcheroo thing okay yep <laughs> oh there we go okay okay found it yeah so we have this lot here oh my gosh that's amazing it's amazing so in washington dc um i we lived on a military base and i was able to um help start a community garden there and we had a really big um just backyard garden uh, in our military base housing as well so so that was a big deal like to really focus on food security for my community of mm -hmm. military families and you know transient families moving but needing access to fresh food so tower garden was a big part of that uh, and so now here's my here's my tower garden it's we had it going this summer but it is so cold and i just it's all about survival here in idaho right and um, so, I mean, we've, you know, a year later, we still quite haven't gotten everything unpacked. And it's just, we just kind of weasel through stuff now. And the cat's eating the cardboard boxes. And I mean, <laughs> they're helping you unpack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, slowly, slowly, but <laughs> surely. So, but my big thing is we have our seed starting set up coming. And all my boxes have come oh, in. that's the seed starting set up right there. Yeah. So that should be oh. that. So this is, um, this is wide enough. This is two feet long. And so it'll fit a tray. So four trays per shelf. So I can do 20 trays. Awesome. Plus, um, germinating on the top. And then, so we're getting that ready for the farm. And then I'll have a dedicated seed starting area for the rock wool and then tons of lights and all sorts so we really are getting getting there um maths all oh, sorts nice. okay so, so you are seeing me in like the embryonic 
beginnings of this project. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so excited to see it flourish into this giant farm that you have next to you. It's going to be amazing. And so we want to do um, edible flowers and cut flowers. Um, but, you know, just a lot of good local cooking greens, like really focusing on food that we can really eat, like lots of greens. And I mean, Yikes. why I'm not going to waste my time on pumpkins and gourds. I mean, it just wastes space and wastes water. And yeah, we need food. People need to know how to learn to eat the right food by growing it first. And um, yes, yes. And so, getting any community involved. And I know you have you yeah. get um, your daughters involved, too. Right, right. And so I have a daughter who is um, globally delayed, a full time wheelchair user. And so trying to help her uh, reach her potential. And so um, it's going to be amazing. And so I've started a vision board. I'll show you. Um, I'm just all the things just trying to imagine what we're going to be doing here. And beautifully. So and then I have like, I got my starting stuff. There are some tools I want to get. And um, anyway, so the tower garden is definitely going to be a part of that in the Perfect. Um, accessibility. So we, we've done tables, like garden tables, raised bed tables for wheelchair users. Yeah. And um, so to try to get the functionality for the tower garden where this truly is a farm for every ability. Exactly. And, I remember that's when you got the tower garden. You're like, this is for my daughter because it's perfect wheelchair height that she could do yep. it. It could be her thing. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yep. So Which that's it. Really cool. Thank you so much for sharing. I didn't know yeah. you would even had to put together. Thank you. Yeah, it's there. And you know, um, so I like, it's really, we have really hard water here. And so there's a lot of crust on my, I don't know what you call them. I don't, I don't have terminology, but there's a lot of scale. Do I just start over at some point with these? I'll show you. They're just really super scaly. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know what? I Most of them have, have been fine. Like I haven't noticed a really big difference, but when I'm cleaning the tower for the buildup against between the layers, I've taken like, like a butter knife essentially and just kind of scrape off the mm -hmm. calcium yeah. buildup. That's been the only part that's been kind of a, just because the more calcium buildup you get between the layers, the more it kind of builds up. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't fit together as nicely. As yeah, the and sure. As you. So I've done like that as like a butter knife, just kind of scraping that off just to keep it nice. But the little black baskets, I use them as long as I possibly can, even with a little bit of crust, usually it doesn't have any problem, but after a while they kind of disintegrate and then I just get new ones. Got so, it. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're pretty easy. It's like, I don't know, 10 bucks for 20 of them or something like that. Okay. I had the same problem. And when I, I took mine all apart because out here they were white like that, but I used still wool. I threw them all in the base of the tub when I was cleaning everything and just, it comes off really easy with the still wool too. Okay. Cool. Steel wool. Yeah. Steel wool. And then another cleaner that I've noticed a giant difference is um, citric acid. If I haven't told you about citric acid yet, get it. You can get it on Amazon for 15 bucks for a five pound bag of citric acid. It's good enough to eat, but I just soaked the pieces in it and it actually worked better than vinegar. Like I'd had used vinegar previously and that was because I refuse to use anything I can't eat on my tower garden. Well, I'm not gonna use bleach or like chemicals or I'm just not gonna do that. But citric acid, good enough to eat. You can put it, it, they actually, the bag is made for food, but I just soaked. I probably put maybe a cup, cup and a half, two cups, maybe in like the whole base and soaked everything for 45 minutes or even less. And the calcium crusty stuff just kind of broke off really easily. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, say hi. Hi. Say hi, Miss Nikki. Hi, Miss Nikki. <laughs> How are you? Good. 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 Well, good, thank good. you so much, everyone. This was really great. I have to have pick, go pick a child up, but I would love to check in again in a month. All right. Yes. yes I look forward to seeing I, that farm. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Peggy. Thank you for all your inspiration, everyone. Your gardens are beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.
And then last but not least, I did, um, have a Ryan. Oh, hi. hi. <laughs> how are you? Great, how are you? Good. Oh, sorry, now, my, now I'm talking, my dog sleeps, someone's of course, at the door. Naturally. Of course, naturally. Somebody's yeah. there. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. I think we've met before um, at some of the, um, when there were live events, um, under Amanda Oh, yeah, okay, perfect. I was um, like, do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> but I Chris invited. I Ryan, yeah, I told Ryan to hop on tonight. Perfect. Yeah, I appreciate me, it. So. Welcome. Thanks. Um, yeah, if you I have, have a tower garden tower, or two or three. <laughs> I, I have just one. I would love to have a few more, um, but mine sits outside. So right now I have kale and snap peas, a lot of different lettuce oh, because so I nice. like instant gratification with my lettuce, but like this kale I've had since October, um, just keep eating it. And that's what I love so much about it. And then I just went and I got some new seedlings for different tomatoes. Um, I've got some Swiss chard and uh, Swiss Yum. chard and cilantro that's growing. So, yeah. nice. Awesome. That looks fantastic. You've got some, some mature ones and some looks like you just restarted recently. Yeah, I get frustrated sometimes when they don't um, perform for me. So I, I pull and I start over. <laughs> you and me both, you and me both. I usually hold on a little longer than I'm, that I need to. <laughs> it's hard for me to kill plants. <laughs> it is hard. It's hard for me to kill anything. But here, I'm gonna spin around. I can't, I can't have my tower garden behind me or you can't see me, but I move my computer around here because I've got another one too. So this is one that a pepper plant that gave me one little pepper. I have two little plants and then all of a sudden it started to like die. So I just clipped it back and I was like, why is it not happening? I don't know what I did, but the part that I'm learning in this whole process is that you can't beat yourself up when stuff dies. You just like pull it and move on, which still is hard for me, I have to admit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm learning the more and more I do it, the many years. So I've got a few things on mine. Besides that one, which I'm going to pull soon. I've got kale. I've got broccoli. A lot of times I've gotten broccolini, quote unquote. It's mm. more like spindly broccoli, not like a big head of broccoli. So I'm open for pointers if anyone knows why that's happening. Maybe it's because I plant too many of them. That could be it too. But I've got broccoli and I've learned that broccoli greens are, they make amazing wraps, like a lettuce wrap type thing. I've used that or I just cut them up and saute them kind of like Swiss chard or add them to my Swiss chard which is really good. That's what I've done to these guys. I got a bunch more kale, Swiss chard, which I'm so excited. It's been, it was like six months and I didn't plant it for a while. Cause I was like, I'm just tired of it after a while. I had a little bit and then I've missed it. I didn't realize how much I'd missed Swiss chard. So we've got a couple of Swiss chards. I've got a bunch of lettuces. This is the first time I've actually gotten good results with my microgreens extension. So my microgreens extension, how they normally have it set up is the up top. So I did it up top, but I think it's because it was too tall for me. Like I didn't use it or it just didn't get enough light because the lights weren't high enough. But in the middle down here, I put one, one of the microgreens extensions in the middle and then one like halfway up. The other one's like here. And that's been, I've had a most success I've ever had with the microgreens. I'm still not 100% sold on the microgreens. I like the tower garden design, but the microgreens extension, I give it about a 60 to 70% success rate. Did you have to mm -hmm. add a new, like a more powerful pump? Because nope. So, so with the tower garden, you have, it comes five high, which is about yay tall. You can make it seven high. So you either get a microgreens extension or you can get a regular extension without upgrading the pump. It's exactly the same. So it just makes it from five feet tall till about seven. That well, might not be that tall, maybe six and a half. We make it two extensions taller of those little pieces. So you okay. can kind of move them around. 
And that that's actually worked really well. I've got other kales, lettuces. Um, and then I've got a pepper plant that I've been growing for like over a year. I've got some pretty peppers on it. I'm so excited. They're not as pretty as uh, Chris is with the colors, but oh, I even have another one. There's one back here. I'm not sure how I can get over to show you, but I've got kale. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about, because I've had a lot of people that ask me about um, like harvesting, because you can harvest stuff differently, especially another trick that I learned from Tim Blank is like lettuces and stuff like this, you harvest closest to the base of the plant. So you harvest off the big, like the biggest leaves, which are gonna be the closest to the base of the plant. But things like kales and Swiss chards like that too, you pick off the outside ones, the ones at the base, but things like this one, let me see if I can find a good one that you can see easily. Yay for Tower Garden being so movable. The other thing that I've learned, you can see that, I'm not sure if you, how close you can see, but Tim Blank also talks about another like way to easy harvest instead of just picking off the outside ones to actually like grab all of the leaves together and then notice where it's growing from. So they call that the growing tip. That's gonna be like where your really little ones come out. So go right above that and then just chop it with scissors. Fink. And then you have all of that that's already harvested. It makes it super easy and super quick, especially if you have like kales, <coughs> some lettuces, mostly kale from what I, I don't know what else is similar to that, but if it has like a growing tip, I think you can do that in the lettuces and too, but I don't know, the lettuces are so easy to pick off with my fingernails. I usually just pick off the outside ones, but kales are a little bit tougher, but you just pull it all together and just chop it off and then that's it. So it makes it super, super easy. And then another one that I have a lot of people, especially like bait, basil in particular, Basil is one that instead of harvesting just the big leaves because it gets all spindly and it doesn't look as good, basil is one that you actually clip the top of it. So instead of clipping off the big leaves like you would do the Swiss chard and kales and stuff like that, you actually clip the top. I wish I had one growing, but I've been trying to grow basil. Basil doesn't like cold Colorado and Nikki. It's just not a good mixture. I don't know. I grew amazing basil in Arizona, but in Colorado, it has not been the same experience. But I don't, I don't know if I've have, does anyone have any basil plants that they can show off? We could talk about it. Do you have a basil plant, Chris? Oh yeah, we saw it. You have still have light because you know how to trim that, right? Well, I, I kind of wonder if I trimmed, I don't know. I mean, I wonder if I tr didn't trim it nicely because it doesn't seem like it, I mean. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, but it, it, I don't, I mean, it's starting to flower at the top here. You can see those flowers. Okay, so yeah, exactly. So since you're there, since it's starting to flower, just pick the flowers off. So like the first ones, that first yeah. joint. And then what yeah. happens is that if you can look at the joint from where you picked the other ones off, uh -huh. since you picked off the top, normally you don't do that with like lettuces and stuff like that, you would kill it. But basils yeah. and herbs and things like that, if you clip off the top, what happens is there's two leaves usually growing out below that joint and you clip that top off, those yeah. two leaves will start to become their own branch. Oh, so I should and try so, not. So the more you clip off the top, the more bushy it gets instead of long and spindly. Oh, Same thing with it. the medicine See, plants. I, I grab the two. I, I, but that's okay because the then just the next one down will do that. Okay. So it's so I so should, unlike all of these, all of these with the little flowers, I should yep. break yep, those you off. Pick those off. And yeah, and those two leaves that grow out the side will both become their own branch. All right. And that's how you get basil to be more of like a bush instead of spindly, just one off little rods that okay. kind of look funny. Right. Yeah. Same thing with I mean, plants it was also. it was growing really well. And I think I don't know if I chopped down too far. But this one over here, this is like a uh nowhere to go. 
<laughs> You've got so many towers, everything gets lost. Where did it go? Where did it go? <laughs> oh, here it is. This purple one. This one's like, I don't know. He's been sad. He just doesn't, that one just doesn't want to, it's not really doing much, but it's like a, a purple basil. Ooh, it's pretty. Yeah. Yeah, if you is, do the same thing with that, and like, growing. yeah, I don't know. The top it's been growing it'll well. kind of bush out a little bit more. All right. Maybe I'll try that. Maybe how um, does that one get a lot of sun? Maybe just turning the tower garden around might help that. Maybe I'll try that. I don't know. It just it just seems like it just it never. It's not taken off like that other like the green like the traditional one. Yeah. Sometimes it's just so. the different species will do that. Like the yeah. I think that one's called the amethyst basil. I think feel like I've gotten that one from True Garden a few times. Yeah. That, and yeah, sometimes that it be. grows like yeah, gangbusters and sometimes it gets like me, nah. mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> which is a bummer and you don't want to kill it, but sometimes it makes more sense to just be like, all right, well, thank you for feeding me and just pull mm -hmm. it out and plant something else. Yeah. 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 So that's, that's a trick with, especially basil. I'm trying to think of a other, but a lot of the herb type well, things. Like and there, I guess, that too, or for, for tomato plants, have you have you talked about um, cutting out the what's it called now? They call it like the growing or the sucker, the suckers. Yeah, um, so I haven't have, fully. No, they grow in your like in the Y. Right, exactly. When when the two are separated, there's like a little sucker in the middle yeah um let me see if i can find one on my tomato especially these new ones that have grown um oh and it's so hard because it's not very bright and light here i know let me see that's what happens at six o'clock it gets darker <laughs> i know I'm trying to see if there was one there no nope, not there either but yeah if you can find where there's two two coming up apart from each other yeah it's okay. it like wise oh there you got one here's, see this right here see this is right here and right here so that's a y okay this one right, this one right here is in the, is growing straight up the middle of between those two so they say to clip that one that's a sucker oh, okay that one will take away see i have flowers growing here uh-huh Take away from those so you clip the suckers out because they won't yes. produce but the branch down below the blooms actually provides sugar or something to the bloom above so it actually needs that the other part of the y encourages the bloom and the fruit so, so yeah but you're so you're supposed to take that sucker out right yeah the sucker just it stills water it, literally it right. sucks extra out yeah. and he won't do anything yeah. but the guy the left y to your bloom produces okay. some kind of sugar that feeds your flower so, and this, your fruit. so this one right here this where am yeah, i at? This, this one produces for this one he's Is partner. that what you're saying uh -huh. okay because i've cut those before and then your blooms die and i looked it all up and i was like dang this plant's really a lot more intricate than i thought huh hmm interesting good to know cool. so yeah micah is like the plant guru when it's still lighter have in a future tower garden talk i'll have her go through her garden <laughs> and well I do. this is not a good time because you just got snowed on in texas which is not a normal thing uh, my carrots got burnt pretty bad but they're coming back and my onions came back so nice. we're gonna get some raised bed stuff going when we come back from our camp trip this coming weekend Yay. Well, that's exciting. So next month, you'll probably have something to show them. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Nine nice. months of summer, it feels like out here in the desert. So might as well. Yeah. Enjoy it. That's the one thing that I've noticed the difference between being in Arizona and moving to Colorado is uh, the season is like nothing here <laughs> compared to Arizona. <laughs> it's like the season was so long when you figured it out when that it wasn't summer. Summer is not the time to grow, but the rest of the year is gorgeous. <laughs> Most of the time. <laughs> well, you can keep your snow. We don't want it back anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> hey guys. All right. I'm, all right. I've we'll keep go. it. 
I've got to yes. go because I've got to get one of my kids dinner. So perfect. Uh, thanks for doing all this, Nikki. We'll talk Thank to you, you guys soon. Bye. Yeah, guess, yes. Bye. All right. Well, actually, that was about kind of the end. I think unless we have any major questions, I will uh, end it here and say thank you for jumping on and showing me your tower gardens. Yay, they all look so great. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I'll go ahead and stop there.